بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو سالار خان یو ٹیوب چینل وے ٹو ڈے وی اسٹارٹ اے نیو ٹاپک اینڈ دیٹ از آف دا لکوڈ ڈائلیکٹرکس سو پریویسلی یو ہیو سین دیٹ وی ڈسکسڈ دا گیس انسولیشن وی سو دا امپارٹنٹ پراپرٹیز اینڈ دین وی وی سو دا میکینزم آف بریک ڈاؤن آئی ہوپ یو ہیو انجوائڈ اٹ رائٹ یس واٹ از دا موسٹ کامن ایگزامپل آف گیس انسولیشن Air, yes, air is the most common example. And what is the dielectric strength of air? Please write in the comment. Yes, it's 21.1 kilovolt per centimeter RMS value or 30 kilovolt per centimeter the peak value. And the most common application is overhead transmission line. In between the conductors we have got air. Right. Besides this, we, 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 up, we you know, understood the process of breakdown through the operation of a circuit breaker. right so air blast circuit breakers we have we have oil field circuit breakers we have sf6 circuit breakers nitrogen was also used as an insulation because it also has got the cooling property when it expands it produces cooling but it is abundant due to uh, corrosion it produces corrosion as well one other thing that i uh, you know normally use the words are dielectric and insulation dielectric and insulation so basically i've also explained it previously but the thing is that by nature both of these are one and the same thing but once anything is used in a capacitor then for that we used for that we use the term dielectric both are you know doing what the isolation of voltages but when you talk of capacitor then we have to use the word uh, of dielectric we do not say that there is an insulation between the two plates of a capacitor we say there is a dielectric between the two plates of the capacitor for a capacitor that thing is used which is strongly polarized which produces polarization strongly polarized means what that which means you can say that it charges as soon as the voltage is applied it charges very quickly so uh, those materials are used which are polar in nature the most common example you could say is uh, uh, is water h2o so you've got an h plus you've got an oh minus right so it's a polar form of molecule and it's a natural dipole the permittivity of pure water is very high 78 to 80 but why is it not used in insulation so today we may discuss that point as well i ask you this question or let's say let's say we talk about it later but and similarly you talk about capacitors so you have to use in capacitors also that thing which are highly polarized air we have air capacitors air is generally weakly polarized but we also have air capacitors right yes so anyways this was just uh, you know i often use the terms interchangeably so you do not need to confuse it the primary purpose by nature both of them are the same to provide the isolation of voltages but when you talk of capacitance storage of charges then you have to use the word of dielectric where polarization is involved okay so let's talk about liquid dielectrics today in this video liquid dielectrics now what are liquid dielectrics so the most common example is oil and you have got oil circuit breakers it's used in capacitors it's used in cables the most important or the most common example is transformer oil right the most common uh, application is transformer oil but you know okay where does it come from so it's a it's a it's a derivative of a crude oil basically where does it come from so it's a crude oil derivative and it's a heavy derivative like the gasoline so gasoline is a light derivative over here this thing is a heavy derivative right yes now uh, uh, it has got two important uh, uh, classifications so number one is the nephthenic nephthenic i believe the spelling is right i don't know but anyways it doesn't matter and the second one is paraffinic So these are the two, you know, uh, 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 classifications of the crude oil for our interest, the crude oil of our interest. You know, it has got other derivatives, but of our interest are these two nephthenic and paraffinic, out of which this nephthenic is a high grade. This is a high grade oil, whereas the paraffinic is a low grade oil. And why am I rating it like this? So it, I, uh, I've got a reason. The nephthenic is preferred or uh, let's say first I talk about this that these nephthenic are in the form of a ring structure. Yes, this is in the form of a ring structure, maybe five, maybe six, maybe seven. 
whereas these paraffinic they are in the form of long chain molecules long chain molecules now the naphthenic is generally preferred or is mostly used uh, and the reason is that it has got dielectric strength relatively higher it is thermally and chemically stable relative to the paraffinic one and and one other thing is the formation of sludge it does not form no formation of sludge at low temperatures at low temperatures what is and, and sludge is in the form of wax so it does not form a sludge in the form of wax uh, uh, at uh, low temperatures okay yes now what is sludge so this is the waste form you know this is a sort of a wax sort of a waste which settles down so if it settles down what would happen if it uses transformer oil so transformer oil circulates through the radiator piping so it may block those pipings and the cooling system would be affected anyways we'll talk about this later on this is generally i'm telling you the classification of this oil naphthenic and paraffinic so naphthenic is generally preferred okay in power transformer capacitor but anyhow in some places the paraffinic is also used and and in what cases so maybe you could say that you know you've got a budget problem you don't have money in your pocket so this one might be a little uh, you know uh, uh, what uh, cheaper relatively cheaper so you can go for this it will work but then if you talk about countries like Russia Siberia etc where the temperatures operating temperatures would be very low so there it would not work similarly in Pakistan we also have uh, areas where the temperatures are very low so it does not work at a very low temperatures it become dense or viscous I would say so the viscosity changes and the performance is not as it is so these are high grade and low grade oils basically both of them are low grade oils you know but out of them uh, even the paraffinic is lower grade right you encounter this word of a grade actually while you know changing the mobile oil of your car so how do you select that mobile oil by the by the grade right 0 w50 20 w50 and this so what we prefer is generally go for 2050 or 20 or 1050 in pakistan i'm talking about so uh, why because you have extreme temperatures over here the, the weather is uh, the winter is extreme the summer is extreme so you can go for a 1050 or a 2050 anyways that is not our topic our topic i would write over here for today is the essential properties that any liquid dielectric that any liquid must have to be used as insulation or as what as a dielectric so essential properties are what so number one is of course it should have a high dielectric strength it should have a high dielectric strength now this dielectric strength over here in the liquid case ranges from 0.1 megavolt per centimeter and approaching a maximum value of 1 megavolt per centimeter which in gases was from a few kilovolt per centimeter to this value in gases where do you have is from few kilovolt per centimeter to a maximum of 0.1 megavolt per centimeter okay yes then the next point is that it should be thermally and chemically stable of course now today let me just put it over here together why because these things are you know interrelated one is helping the other thermal instability causes chemical instability generally right so it should be thermally stable it should not dissociate right with temperatures it dissociates you know the viscosity changes right yes uh, so i will just put another point over here is that it should have an appropriate viscosity it should have an appropriate viscosity. it should not be very much thin and light it should not be very much viscous and dense the appropriate viscosity and it should be appropriate enough to reach you know the minute uh, 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 gaps as well inside the container so it should have an appropriate viscosity and should not change or alter at at least till the operating temperatures 
limits it should remain in that limits what are our normal operation operating limits are plus 65 degrees so it should be you know fine till that limit as described by the manufacturer i could write a point is non-flammable non-flammability is a point right yes it should be non-toxic so non-toxic uh, generally previously you know uh, 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 the PCB based oils were used polychlorobiphenyl so even though their uh, you know dielectric strength was quite high very high but the thing is that they were very toxic right and similarly they were not properly biodegradable so their disposal was a big problem so now it has been abandoned initially uh, the, it was abandoned by the canadians in the early 60s and then you know in the uh, late 60s uh, they are they have been completely abandoned in pakistan we may still have a few transformers where these pcb based oils are used one other thing is relatively in the villages we've got a concept over here in pakistan is that this transformer oil is good for massage purposes so whenever you see a transformer oil leaking somewhere they would just you know uh, try to get a hold of it and and you know they use it for massage purposes so it should not be used this is toxic you know you don't know about the after effects what could happen this could penetrate the skin right yes so anyways so uh, this should be non-toxic and, and and i mentioned over here about the pcb based oil so this should be environmental friendly environmental friendly again in the case you know you have to use it you have to you have to do the maintenance environmental friendly and i would put it as biodegradable so that it should be properly disposed of similarly you can put a word of non-toxic as well and it should have some cooling properties it should have some cooling properties cools because the working temperatures are very high so it should have those cooling properties as we saw in the gases you know we had it in the sf6 right yes so I believe there should be it now in the liquid the n-hexane and n-heptane are the liquids that have got very high dielectric strengths but you know they are not used because of other properties and that is what that they are not chemically and thermally stable and similarly they are flammable their ignition temperature is very low they ignite very quickly similarly we've got silicon based oils similarly we've also got silicon based oils or just let me write over here that i've got n heptane i've got n hexane they've got a high dielectric strength approaching to one megavolt per centimeter but the thing is they are not used why because they are not thermally chemical stable they are flammable they ignite at very low temperature similarly we've got silicon based oils and those silicon based oils have a have a high electric strength of about 35 to 40 kilovolt per millimeter and you know they are again not used because they are explosive they are explosive okay right so so come to the oils that is the naphthenic they are commonly used nowadays and in these also you've got grades so you've got a transformer grade you've got a capacitor grade and you've got what you've got a cable grade so the transformer grade or the transformer oil is what it has got the dielectric strength of about 150 kilovolt per millimeter or this would be 15 kilovolt per centimeter isn't it like this no 15 kilovolt per millimeter or 150 kilovolt per centimeter yes sorry similarly you've got the capacitor oil and the capacitor oil is a 20 kilovolt per millimeter or if i write it so this will be a 200 kilovolt per centimeter similarly cable oil so cable oil is 30 kilovolt per millimeter or it is 300 kilovolt per centimeter these silicon based oils have got you know a, a range of 30 35 to 40 kilovolts per millimeter but they're not used because they are you know ex uh, explosive now why why do this dielectric strength actually vary over here why have i written different dielectric strengths for different type of applications you could say 
so the thing is basically and how do they vary so they are very depending on the on the value of the or the or the uh, you know content of the polyaromatic compounds so polyaromatic compounds are those compounds over here which you know decreases the dielectric strength so the more you do the refining the more you do the removal of these polyaromatic compounds the greater the dielectric strength is which means that in the cable oil polyaromatic compounds are very less so the refining process but the refining process is quite expensive over here so anyways why is the cable high grade and the transformer low grade oil so the thing is that you cannot go for maintenance i would say over here in the cable oil right how would you do that how would you change it or this or that so quite a difficult and hectic process it is but in case of transformer you can you know go for the routine maintenance you can check for the dielectric properties and you can change it easily which would not be the case in case of a cable so depending on these you know uh, 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 this is a high grade that is a low grade one important thing is that the that the dielectric properties of the liquid insulation are partially recoverable after a breakdown I would write dielectric properties of liquid insulation are partially recoverable after a breakdown which means what that it can be reused as we saw in the gas insulation so they can be completely reused without any effect but over here they are partially recoverable which means that they can be used till a certain extent you've got a certain limit of operation for that for instance over here you've got 15 kilo volt is is the normal working limit of, a, of is the normal is the fresh is the value of the dielectric strength of a fresh uh, transformer oil sample after some working after some operation you know you, you check for the dielectric strength in the routine maintenance and the limit is 10 kilovolt per millimeter if if the value happens to be greater than then 10 you can use it but if the value happens to be less than 10 then you cannot use it and again there are ways you know to improve this or to to do this to to remove the impurities or to improve the little bit of a dielectric strength you know if this comes out to be 13 or 12 what can you do so we'll see that in the next videos but over here i mean to say is that they can be you know reused till a certain extent and how is this dielectric strength measured so you've got two electrodes again in the similar fashion they could be spherical they could be these rogowski profile and and you introduce the liquid dielectric over here this spacing is d right yes and the dielectric strength is equal to the brick over voltage the voltage at which this breaks down you apply the voltage uh, and when what happens is that you increase this voltage by a rate by a specific rate that is one kilovolt per, per second you know uh, generally generally the voltage is increased at a rate of one kilovolt per second and generally this distance is uh, the distance the, the gapping between the electrodes is a 2.5 millimeter or this could be four millimeter five millimeter generally this is 2.5 millimeter so how do you measure the dielectric strength the breakover voltage at which the flash occurs divided by the spacing d in between them and then to remove the to remove the non-uniformity or to avoid any other laboratory conditions a 0.97 factor over here which i told you is called the schwager factor is introduced for any non-uniformities so this is how you uh, uh, go for the dielectric strength okay so i think i will finish this video over here I, I i have elongated it a little but the thing is that these are the essential properties that any liquid must have in order to be used as an insulation one one other thing that i i could write over here is that it should have a high boiling point it should have a high boiling point and uh, one uh, related with this is that it should have a low freezing point as well why because a transformer you're using so you have to use it in 
Saudi Arabia as well so the boiling point should be high similarly you have to use it in Russia as well so it should have a low freezing point so that is it about this video about the introduction to liquid dielectrics I will see you in the next video where we see the breakdown mechanism till then take care goodbye